one. All right, first slide, please. Anybody need that today? Yes. Hey, okay, I got a few hands. A few hands, okay, somebody else. Maybe, maybe there's those that need encouragement. To be honest, they need encouragement. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Needless to say, um, for, for those to get encouragement, what has to happen? We need to encourage them. Someone has to give it. Right? And so that's what we're here for. We're here to look after one another. And um, uh, as I've always uh, been told, you know, give what you have to give and get what you have to get. And hopefully that's what will happen today. And you'll feel that God, uh, whether or not I or anyone else knows what's going on in you, God does. And God wants to encourage you today. But I have a question. What does it mean? What does it mean to encourage one another? And how do you do it? How do you encourage people? Now, there is something to be said for hoping each other are happy, isn't there? We want each other to be happy, don't we? In fact, I had a minister friend, uh, Steve Kennard. He went to Africa in the 90s and spent some time with our churches there. And when he came back, he said there was one, one brother who every time he saw him, he said, Steve, are you happy? <laughs> and he said it was just good to have someone that cared if he was happy. Um, I hope all of you have people that care that you're happy. And, and really, that's, that's, that's what we want to do. But I believe it's more than that. And I believe this is where um, we miss the mark. And in our search for happiness, so many aren't happy. Does that make sense? So many around us aren't happy. And it's hard to watch people, much less yourself, to go through that uh, when you're feeling those things. And, and part of that is just life. I want to read a scripture to you that I'm sorry I don't have a slide for. But it occurred to me this morning. It's in Psalm 119, verse 1 and 2. And it's, it's a, a, a foundational scripture that, that we teach in the church even at the very beginning when people come and start to study the Bible. This is one of the first things we teach in Psalm 119, verse 1 and 2. It says, blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. Amen. And so there's something to be said about doing the right thing. Right. And feeling good when you do the right thing. Now, we all mess up and do the wrong thing. And that's what we need encouragement. <laughs> Amen. But, but the only point I'm trying to make from this scripture, blessed, meaning happy, um, or, or as we would say, superlatively happy. Who's going to be happy? Those who are seeking after God. Now, that's what we believe in the church, right, church? Amen. We, we believe that. Yes. The world doesn't believe that. But we believe we'll be happy if we seek after God with all our heart. That's where happiness is. And so what we say is happiness is a byproduct of seeking after God, right? It's a byproduct. Unfortunately, so many want the byproduct without the, what's it called, scientist? I don't even know what the, the main product is, <laughs> right? But without God. Um, next slide, please. Okay, we talked about this quote a few weeks ago, um, but I didn't give you the full quote. This is C.S. Lewis from Mere Christianity. I'll just read it. And out of that hopeless attempt has come nearly all that we call human history. Money, where did money come from? Poverty, ambition, war, and there are plenty of those going on around the world. Prostitution, classes, Right? Upstairs, downstairs, upper, middle, lower. Um, empires, slavery. The long, terrible story of man trying to find something other than God which will make him happy. And it's important that we see that. That we, that we really understand 
That's what's going on in our world. And, and Christians, do you believe that? That that's why people aren't happy. And that when we're not happy, what do we need to do? Get our eyes back on God. That's what we talked about at midweek, and it was a great midweek. Okay, next slide. So I hope you can read that. Yeah, it's okay. Um, but what does it mean to encourage one another? Well, here's a scripture. Hebrews 3, 12, 13. I'll read it to you. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you. Okay, that means not one of you. Okay, so if there's one of you, we need to make it none of you. Okay, just breaking it down. See to it that none of you has a sinful, uh-oh, there went the word, unbelieving heart, that's what sin does, that turns away from the living God. Why do we take our eyes off God? I know this is a simple lesson. It's a simple concept, but it's not simple to do it, is it? And I believe that's because we have an enemy, the devil, that... The entire goal is to get our eyes off of God and to get us to believe in sin, trust in sin. It hardens our hearts and we turn away from the living God and we need to turn back. So, therefore, what does it say? But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be Hardened by sin's deceitfulness. A whole other sermon on the deceitfulness of sin. A whole other sermon. But what are we here to encourage each other for? Next slide, please. Okay. We've cut out a bit. Encourage one another daily so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Brothers and sisters, sin is deceitful. What does that mean? You don't know what's going on when you do it. You're deceived. I'm deceived. Right? When, when, I, when I go the way of sin, I go, what am I doing? When I come to my senses. But in the moment, the lie is that this will make you, or, or at least in the middle of it, it'll, it'll, it'll make it better, whatever. But, but so, very specifically, brothers and sisters, we need to encourage one another so that we won't be hardened by sins to seek. That's the encouragement of a disciple of Jesus versus the encouragement of someone who just wants you to be happy and doesn't know how to get there. It's important that we understand that. It's important that we aren't those people that want everybody to be happy but don't understand how we're going to get them there. Whether they want to get there or not, that's their decision. Is this clear? It's important that, because I believe the devil's thrown a veil over it for us. And, and again, I am all about feeling happy. But sometimes, if I'm walking toward a cliff, encouragement doesn't mean, yeah, keep going, Chris, you're doing good. Now, I know none of you would tell me to do that. <laughs> no, you got to say, there's a cliff. No, there's not. Yeah, there is. Look, I know it's... it's Cloudy and gray in Manchester, but there is a cliff. You can see it if you look close enough, okay? All right, we don't want to be hard. Next slide. I showed you this one. I just want to show it to you again. Because I want to encourage you. <laughs> it's my encouragement. Don't let sin eat you for lunch. Or breakfast or dinner, okay? Don't let sin get you. All right, let me, let me, let me give a little sugar with the medicine. I'm going to show you a video, and this brother knows I'm going to show it. Uh, but I really appreciate a brother named Tuller. And thank you for convening, you guys. The 412 knows what I'm talking about, but perhaps it hasn't leaked out to the wider uh, membership. But Tuller came up with, created, and, and, and put into place this thing called the Encouragement Bounty. And I want to show you a video that came out last week. It's been a while since we've had a bounty. For those who are new to the job, the task is simple. Every week you'll be given an encouragement target, 
and your task is simply to encourage them. This encouragement can come in the form of a gift, a message, a call, a scripture, or however you want to encourage them. So, as you all know, another week, another bounty. Let's find out who's on the bounty this week. <laughs> the bounty will be on Chris Broom. So please find any way to encourage him to live a hard money. Okay, bounty hunters, happy hunting. <laughs> so in honor of Tolu, I just wanted to open up the rest of the sermon for you guys to encourage me and say my stories. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Next slide. Each week, Tolu puts out uh, a wanted poster. And so he puts out all the information about how to encourage you and what you like. And I tell you what, these bounties have been going on for quite a while. And um, it was kind of cool to be the recipient of the bounty and to be able just to be encouraged. Um, but what does it say? It says, Encourage one another daily. How many admit you need encouragement daily? All right, good amount of hands. And so we all need to be giving encouragement daily. Now there's one man I know who encourages people daily. And I've got a few more video clips to show you. They're all around a minute or less. But how many of you have seen Sam Lee's encouraging daily good morning messages? Nick has. Anyone else? Oh, okay. Numeros. All right, over here. Oh, you, you are in for a treat. <laughs> Sam does this every, well, almost every day. So here's Monday. Monday for sure. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's another Monday. It's the 4th of March. I want you to remember that you're not going to hear or you never hear anybody else's voice more than you hear yours. So you need to be intentional about the things you say to yourself. You need to be intentional about what you say to yourself. If you want to be successful, you will find excuses or you will do what you need to do. You will say positive things to yourself. You will, I'm a winner, I'm a champion. I can do this. I am beautifully and wonderfully made. I am awesome. I am fantastic. I am blessed. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. You can do amazing things. So let me encourage you today as you start this new week. Let me encourage you to say the right things to yourself. Let me encourage you to be positive to yourself and to pick yourself up as often as you possibly can. I think I'm much more prefer. All right, take care. More blessings. Amen. So, one of Sam's jobs is a mental health first aider trainer, you know, and so he does these videos. He's also a financial coach, and he has a YouTube channel. I'll show you. I'll show you in a bit. But he so he does this every day, and a lot of it is it's to a wide audience, right? And it it, it is about mental health and wellness. But he and Gilda have also for years stood in the gap and taken care of the Leeds Church in incredible ways and served like few I know. They are incredible. So, but isn't this true? And so maybe on a Monday morning, you need to hear that. Like, how do you talk to yourself? Anybody wake up with negative talk in your minds? Yeah, I do. And, and the devil is putting it there. <laughs> And we're wired to kind of talk neg negatively to ourselves. We need to learn, first place to encourage is ourselves. And, and that's why we take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. And uh, while we think about what is true, what is lovely, what is admirable, think about these things, Philippians 4. Um, but let's go to Tuesday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Terrific Tuesday, the 10th of September. As you go out today, remember there are only two things you can control. You can control your effort, what you put in, and you can control your attitude, 
how you react. When you have those two things in control, then maybe the sky is the limit. Take care, more pieces, have a fantastic day. Peace. All right, so maybe on a Tuesday morning you could use that. And the, again, it's a great thought. There's only two things you're going to control today. What you put in and how you react to what comes your way. I think it, it's a quote attributed to Mike Tyson, the American fighter. Everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then how do you respond, right? So we start talking to ourselves positively. We go out and put the effort in. But then we're going to get the attack. We're going to get, it's going to come. Yeah. How do we respond? And Wednesday will help us further with the response. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to this wonderful wedding Wednesday. No matter what's going on around you today, I want you to remain calm and centered. No matter, no matter what's going on outside of you, remember nobody, not anybody, can trigger your emotions unless you give them the permission to do that. So today, just be encouraged, be fired up, be cool, be calm, be collected, be centered in yourself, and know that all will be well. Take care, more blessings. See you soon. Peace. <laughs> right, so you've got the theme now. Good morning, good morning, good morning. That, that's, the, that's the theme. And then uh, the fun, fun titles for the, the days. It's always good. Um, but how true is this when we react staying calm anybody struggle with staying calm Brian I've seen you drive mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry I love you I love you, I love you man and uh, I, I, now I digress um, because when Nick announced the International Sunday and talked about coming in our native garb, I thought, well, Allie's definitely wearing Man United gear. So, <laughs> anyway, okay. So they're in Scotland, can't defend themselves today. So anyway. <laughs> um, but staying calm. And I believe so much about being encouraged daily helps us to stay calm in those, those difficult times. And where can we go for encouragement? All right, but we need to move on. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another thankful, thriving Thursday. You know, I'm reminded of a song this morning, and the song is by one year called, and it says, the lyrics, part of the lyrics, it says, some have shoes, but they have no legs. Some have legs, but they have no shoes. We have shoes, and we have legs. Glory be. And then the other one, it says, some can dance, but they have no legs. Some, can, some have legs, but they, have, they cannot dance. We can dance and we have legs. You know, today you're here, you're, you can see me, you can hear me. Whatever it may be, let's be thankful. Let's have a fantastic day. You are blessed more than most. Take care. More blessings. Peace. Peace. Still dancing? Still dancing. That's right. Um, what, what a great little sentiment to think about for the day, you know, that we all have um, things that are good. We all have things that are challenging to us, right? That's the song. And um, not having legs, but you can still dance. That, that, I remember during lockdown, we were having a dance party. I think Sam was, I think Sam was uh, DJing for that Zoom dance party. Um, and some of you were on that. And there was a dancing section. And I was honestly feeling very insecure about all that. So I was sitting on the bench. Teresa was standing behind me in the kitchen dancing. And I was on the bench doing what I call bench dancing. I was dancing. I, I could really do it without the legs, right? Without, without standing up. But we all have these challenges. Uh, to be a little more serious, I remember hearing the quote for the first time. It's easy to complain about having no shoes until you see someone with no feet. And things get put into perspective. But then again, I've seen people with no feet that are the most joyful people I've ever seen in my life, right? And so, so much of that battle is up top. When um, I told her to put the bounty on my head, um, I was very encouraged, several people encouraged me a whole lot. Um, but, but one of the very encouraging things was Paul. Paul down here, who's running the sound today, um, sent me a, a, a pretty long, in-depth, meaningful note 
that he said I'd been meaning to do, but because Tolu encouraged the bounty, it, it pushed me to do it. And it meant a lot, Paul. It really meant a lot. And, you know, I had the privilege of being involved in Paul's studies toward the end. Nick and some, Isaiah, some of the other brothers have been in those studies. And I got to jump in at the end um, and, and, and be a part of seeing Paul change his whole life and give his whole life to Jesus. And he just talked about that and, and how those studies made such a huge difference in his life and helped him to make, he's made some huge decisions, right? And, and I hope you don't mind my sharing. One of, them, one of them I said was, just remember, you're now a disciple of Jesus. And yes, you're a surgeon and that is huge. And there'll be times your job calls you away, but always be a disciple of Jesus. And, and this morning I came in, Paul's got this strap and Eloise was helping and, and, and uh, Alex, the straps turned over and he's fitting the cord into the little groove in the strap. And I'm just getting an image of him being in surgery. <laughs> and he told me about several of the surgeries he was involved in this week. Um, one of made it difficult for Eloise not to go and cry, but she said, you know, I mean, these, this guy's in challenging life or death situations. And then he's here early setting up the sound. So Paul, I want to thank you for that. And, and, I, and I was in another discussion with someone who is also a wonderful person who was mentioning being in studies. But it wasn't even their own study. It was studies with other people but it made them look at their life in such a deeper way and start to go, I need to make some decisions. And they're, they're wrestling with those things. And, and, and I'm just here to help and support that process. Be in studies. Let me encourage you. You wanna keep your heart from being hardened? Get in Bible studies with people. And I don't mean just erroneous, say a scripture. I mean, where you share your heart, you get in there, you talk about your life. It, that's what our church is all about. That's what changed my life when I was 23 years old in 1990 were those Bible studies. They'll help you tremendously. Okay, um, I, think it's, I think it's Friday. I don't think he says Friday, but it's Friday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Guess who's back? Come on. It's another beautiful day. It's another beautiful life. I am thankful, I am blessed. As you look around today, as you look around right now, as you're listening, as you're, as you're watching, whatever it is, think about 10 things. 10 things that you're grateful for, 10 things that you're thankful for, 10 things that belong to you. You, nobody else, they're yours. You don't have to pay a penny for them. Be thankful because that plays a massive role in your well-being, mental, physical, any single way. Be thankful, be grateful, you are blessed. A lot of people, would, would are praying to be exactly where you are right now. You are blessed in so many different ways. Take care. Peace. Amen. All right, so we're going to do that right now. Ten things right now. Uh, we always say do it later, and yeah. sometimes we don't do it. I, I thought of people I was grateful for, and I had ten in like ten seconds. Write them down. Ten people, things, experiences you're grateful for. Pop those down. And while you do that, I'm going to show Sam's link in case you want to log on to his YouTube. There it is, Sam Lee, financial coach and, and uh, mental health first aid trainer. And the next one, good morning times three, Sam's Paration. Okay, so if you want to get those daily or how often he does them, you can sign up for those. And we'll leave it there for a second. All right, who, who has a couple already? Just name one. What are you grateful for? Sorry? Salvation. Salvation. Food on the table. Wendy. My husband. Okay. We'll tell Richard about that. Food. The roof. The roof. Being educated. Okay. Oh, being on the wake up list, Sam calls it. Waking up today. Parents. Parents. Oh, we got some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was your daughter, Rob. Yeah, yeah. Rob's like, that's my daughter. Anybody else? Yes, Tim. Nature. Nature. In the back. 
Help. New job. Come on. Oh, your mom. Okay. Fantastic. Living in a sister's flat. Living in a sister's flat. Let's go. Yes, ma'am. Children. Children. Okay. None of you said this. <laughs> in all seriousness, when you read that. Because it's easy to think, well, I'll be happy when times are good. Yeah. But then when there are tough times, it's hard to be happy. You can see, but it's hard to be happy. Um, but when do we learn the most? And when do we seek for God? And again, this is C.S. Lewis. He's been making his way into a lot of sermons lately. Pain insists upon being attended to. God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our consciences, but shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. The world is astray. The world is off. The world is, have closed their ears. That's scripture. Otherwise, I would have helped you. You would have turned and I would have helped you. The world... So many want to be deaf when it comes to God. And so pain is an avenue for God to shout, for God to reach. People go to God in pain. How many of you, do prayers get more fervent when we're in pain? Next slide, please. Got a few scriptures for you. Ecclesiastes 7, 2. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to a house of feasting. For death is the destiny of everyone. That's why it says, see to it that none of you. And the living should take note. Take this to heart. The devil wants us to get caught up and not contemplate our mortality and our eternity and our judgment. And... I'm not saying spend all day every day, <laughs> but we need to, to, to have those times. Next slide, please. Matthew 5, 3 and 4. Jesus says, blessed, happy are the poor in spirit. What? What are you talking about? What? What? Right? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You've got to realize what you don't have. You've got to realize you can't do it on your own. Wake up, Chris. Stop trying to do this by human effort. And when you realize and you're willing to admit, I'm at the end of my rope, then God can do the miracles, right? Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Uh, there's a famous saying many of you have heard over the years, how God comforts the disturbed, but disturbs the comfortable. Right? That's that pain. That's that him wanting to reach us when our comfort doesn't come from him. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, a few weeks ago, many of us uh, had the opportunity to say farewell to our dear sister Irene who passed. And in fact, next Sunday, um, Pete and Sue will oversee and Cap and, and, and a lot of folks from the South, Cheadle, will be sharing in, in the welcome and sharing about Irene. Um, as a church because she meant so much um, to the church for so many years. This is a scripture that I read at the funeral in um, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3 and 4. Paul says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So it is a pay it forward. When we go through difficult times and we're able to seek comfort from God, then when others go through difficult times, we're able to share that comfort with them and to let them know 
it's from God. <laughs> That's where the comfort is. Uh, ne next slide. Um, and so going on a few verses later, and I read this at the funeral as well, Paul gets open about his troubles. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. That was, Paul was going through it, pain, right? Indeed, we felt we'd received the sentence of death. Maybe some here are feeling that distraught today. It says, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, by the way, who raises the dead. There it is. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril. He will deliver us again. On him we've set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. And it's in those times of pain that God shouts, I'm here. I'll deliver you. Just turn to me. I'll catch you. Right? You took your eyes off me. Nick preached a, a week or two ago. You start to sink. I'm here. I'll grab you. I'll lift you out of that water. Put your eyes back on me. And who are we putting our eyes on? I've got one more quote for you. It's not C.S. Lewis. It's um, another one of my favorite, Max Licato. Who is God? Who is this God that we need to trust, that we need to turn to? This is a, a summary of Psalm 23, 1, where David, King David says, the Lord, who is he? He's my shepherd. And because of that, I shall not want. I'm good. Because God, Almighty God's got me. You don't need to carry the burden of a lesser God. A God on a shelf, a God in a box, a God in a bottle. And I just got to say, so many people don't understand. And so how often do we lose sight of how powerful our God is and how loving our God is. And we need to be encouraged and reminded. It says, no, you need a God who can place a hundred billion stars in our galaxy and a hundred billion galaxies in the universe. You need a God who can shape two fists of flesh in the 75 to 100 billion nerve cells, each with as many as 10,000 connections to other nerve cells Place it in a skull and call it a brain. And we actually have people that do brain surgery. Holy mackerel, my goodness, what's going on? You need a God who, while so mind-numbingly mighty, can come in the soft of the night and touch you with the tenderness of an April snow. You need a Yahweh. And according to David, you have one. He is your shepherd. And I know that when I go, God is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm content. I'm content now, even in the middle of this, because I know who my shepherd is. And I know he's going to take care of me. I know he's going to get me through all of this. Part of the way God works. Next slide. It's our last slide. Is uh, using each other. God's children, you, brothers and sisters, you are God's vessel to see to it. See to it. Get about it. Do it. That nobody has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns from the living God. But encourage one another. How often? Daily. So that none of you may be hardened by sins to seek. I don't know where you are in the room. I don't know if you're ready to get over. Somebody may have seen you already and looked in your eyes and thought something's not good. Take care of each other. Ask each other. Get open with each other. I was amazed even at the funeral. How many people came up afterwards to me and said, you know that part about getting open about what you feel? I need to. I got stuff in me I was going to just die with. Take to my grave. Maybe I need to get open about it. 
I'm like, wow, this is incredible. But, but people go, where can I get open? Who can I trust with that? That I don't want to talk about. So I pray that we're grateful for all the good things. And I, and I, and I ask, are you happy? I want you to be happy. But maybe the words that need to be said aren't the most pleasant to help us be happy. Those are tough conversations. And let me remind you, nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. And that's the spirit of these conversations that we need to have. So that's all I got for you today, but I do have one more thing to show you. See, when we seek God with all our heart, then we'll be happy. That's the byproduct. And so if you decide today, I'm going to seek God with all of my heart, happiness is coming your way, and you need to get your happy dance ready. I'll, let, I'll end with the happy dance. Show us. God with all your heart, even in those tough times, whatever you're going through, find somebody here you can get open with. We're going to have one more song. we got uh, the bake sale. Get some sweets. That may encourage you and have some great conversation. God bless you.